When we see images of families that come from rich and influential backgrounds, we often think that they have the perfect lives. A happy married couple with a close family, three kids, a nice home, a close-knit community of neighbors, and a tight circle of friends. It doesn't get much better than that. For those on the outside, that is likely how they saw the life of May Lee Haskell. But behind closed doors, things were anything but perfect. And as of right now, there are three people who are missing, at least one dismembered body with the possibility of more, and one person who is most likely responsible for all of it. Today, we are going to be discussing the disturbing and ongoing case of May Lee Haskell. 37-year-old May Lee Haskell was the only child to her parents, Yang Song Wang and Go Xin Li. The family was originally from China, but at some point, May Lee moved to the U.S. while her parents stayed behind in China. May was described by her friends as being such a positive person. She was the one that friends would always go to for advice. She was always there for the ones she loved. She never complained and was generally a very upbeat and happy person. May Lee went on to marry now 35-year-old Samuel Haskell IV. Samuel Haskell Jr. is the son of an award-winning, influential movie producer and agent, Sam Haskell III, and his wife, Mary Haskell. For the sake of avoiding confusion, I'm going to call Samuel May's husband by his full name and his father by Sam. Sam Sr. has represented big names like Kathy Lee Gifford, Whoopi Goldberg, Dolly Parton, George Clooney, and others. He is known for producing movies like Dolly Parton's Heartstrings, Dolly Parton's Christmas of Many Colors, The Walton's Homecoming, and others. In 2007, Sam Haskell Sr. was named by Television Week magazine as one of the 25 most innovative and influential people in television of the last 25 years. He was the former executive vice president and worldwide head of television for the talent agency William Morris Endeavor before quitting in 2004 and founding Mongolia Hill Productions. He was also the CEO of the Miss America organization for two years, but he resigned after he was found to be overly critical of the contestants. Overall, though, Sam Sr. is known as being the nice guy in Hollywood. He is known for his honesty, integrity, loyalty, and fairness. Many of Hollywood's top stars were eager to work with him because he offered consistency in a world where inconsistency and stress ran rampant. So, as you can imagine, Samuel Jr., he comes from money. I believe Samuel Jr. was also in the movie producing business. According to one source, he worked as a videographer and producer, producing low-budget slasher films. According to his social medias, he also worked as an editor for stars like Tyga and Machine Gun Kelly. He also directed photo shoots on actresses like Olivia Holt and Brenda Song. On his website, he wrote, quote, I want to create visuals that move boundaries by bringing millennial artists together. He was also known to frequently post random rambling videos to TikTok. We don't really know if the videos are serious or if he is doing a parody, but one thing that can be said is that these videos are pretty cringe to me. I will play a snippet of the TikToks that he has posted now. Imagine me showing up at work and then here's the plot twist. I'm totally superficial. Yo, shouts out to LinkedIn for just making it like so much more streamlined for me to be told no repeatedly. Like my resume says unhappy, bitter, resentful, um, and like really good at ordering off the menu. Shouts out to the waiter at the restaurant above Nordstrom's for just like completely burning the out of my filet. Like what kind of a monster are you, homie? I can't even imagine reading one of these homeless people's signs. It's very Brad Cooper trying to like reconnect with Irina Shake. Like, oh, hey, sorry about before. Yo, shouts out to my big homie for like buying me camel lights throughout middle school and high school. I now have lemonade colored teeth. If you see me typing really fast, like looking really productive on my laptop, just like typing, typing, chances are I'm just typing random letters and numbers. I went to a tech conference real quick, you guys, by mistake. And the number one thing they talked about was consistency, like be consistent. Now I'm consistently never gonna stop drinking. Yo, shouts out to my boy Keon. He is a game developer, game designer, 
educator, he's an entrepreneur. I'm literally dumping entire bags of shredded cheese into my mouth. Yo, shouts out to Bella Thorne's fiance for literally making it by having a tattoo of an avocado. My goal was to try and drop some LBs by just like not eating any more breakfast burritos. But instead I decided to just spend less money. And to do that, I'm just gonna stop buying water at Erewhon. On a scale from one to Ted Lasso, how in need of a career reset are you? Because I am. At the time, May Lee ran her own business called Haskell Consulting Group, where she helped foreign students with their college applications to top American universities. At the time of the whole situation, May and Samuel shared three sons together, Samuel V, James, and William II, ages 6, 8, and 12 years old. By December of 2020, the couple moved in to a $2.5 million single-story six-bedroom home with a nice pool and play area for the kids located in Tarzana, about 25 miles north of Los Angeles in California. It was said in some sources that Samuel Jr.'s parents were the ones that helped them finance this home and that's why they were able to live in such a nice area. Now, about a year after their third child was born, May's parents moved from China to the U.S. and into the home of May and Samuel so that they could help the couple raise their three children. This is a very common practice with traditional Chinese families. Oftentimes, you will see Chinese household having three generations because they believe that it takes the entire family to help raise the children. The children are raised to become competent, capable adults who have strong work habits and a good foundation for their success in their adult lives. Those who knew May said that she absolutely doted over her children. They were her entire world, and she did everything she could to create a wonderful world for them. The boys were involved in tons of extracurriculars, and they were very accomplished young boys. According to a friend of May's, her parents were also very helpful with the children. They loved being in the home with their grandkids, and May loved having them there. She loved just how close-knit of a family they had created together. However, Samuel, he did not love the arrangement. Yang Song and Go Shin could not speak English, and according to what May told her friends, Samuel made absolutely no effort to communicate with them. He would just ignore them, he was rude to them, and it seemed like their presence was a constant annoyance for him. Not only that, but it seemed that the marriage between Samuel and May was crumbling, and it had been for a while. I want to note that May's parents and children are the only family she has, so when living in the United States, especially before her parents got there, May formed a very close-knit group of friends who were like family to her. According to her close friends, May had confided in one friend at one point that Samuel may have been abusive. There were times that things got physical and he allegedly hit her. May had wanted to separate from Samuel for quite a long time, and she had been considering divorce for years but she feared that she would lose her children, so that's why she never acted on it. She was convinced that Samuel's rich and powerful father would be able to persuade the court to give Samuel custody of their children, and she didn't want that. She wanted to stay to keep the family together and to be able to raise her children how she wanted. According to friends, May felt trapped in her relationship with Samuel. The couple being unhappy in their relationship wasn't even something that only close friends knew about. Even neighbors of the couple noticed that they weren't completely happy. It was obvious that their relationship was kind of in shambles. However, I do want to note that there were a lot of friends of May's who said that she never said anything to them about being unhappy or being abused or anything like that, but 
a lot of friends said that she was the type of person who didn't want to involve other people in her life because she didn't want them to worry about her and she didn't want them to be affected by what was going on with her. So really, it only seemed to be the people that saw her on a very regular basis who noticed what the couple was going through. Again, her very close friends and their neighbors who saw them pretty much every single day. Now, other neighbors and people who knew the couple did describe Samuel as being a bit odd. There were times that they would have people over and Samuel would just keep to himself while May socialized, which is totally fine in most situations. One friend talked about how one time May brought ponies home for one of her son's birthdays, which that was totally like normal behavior for May. She was known to throw the best parties for her sons, making them as memorable as possible. So I guess this time, ponies were involved. But for this birthday, she carefully planned the party, inviting friends, family, and neighbors. Even Samuel's family, including his parents and his sister, who was also named Mary, showed up as they did to every event that the couple threw for the children. While May had worked so hard to put together a special birthday for her son and spent time socializing with the guests and, you know, keeping up with appearances and keeping up with everything that was going on at the party, Samuel sort of just went off on his own and later just disappeared. Even Samuel's parents would stick around and socialize with the guests, being very outgoing and welcoming, but there were times where Samuel was nowhere to be found. People thought that Samuel would either go back into his bedroom or would go on a walk or just separate himself from the social situation in most situations. That type of behavior seemed very common for Samuel. There was another neighbor who said that she grew very close to May, especially during the pandemic. They would cook together, go on long walks together, and their children would always play. But even though the neighbor was very close with May, Samuel always acted a bit off-putting and strange. Samuel being odd and strange is a very common description given by many people who knew the couple. Now, by Sunday, May 5th, 2023, one friend became very concerned for May's well-being because she had reached out to her via text multiple times and May was not responding. The friend was worried because May was known to always respond to texts pretty much right away. Then, on Wednesday, November 8th, another friend of May's noticed that she wasn't the one who dropped the children off at school. Samuel did. May's friend thought that this was very odd because May was always the one who dropped them off. They never saw Samuel dropping the children off before this day. Then, when dropping them off, the friend said that Samuel even confirmed a play date that they scheduled for their children the following day. This was, again, very off-putting to this friend because this was behavior that she had never seen before from Samuel. But then, going back to the day of November 7th, 2023, 911 received a very disturbing call from day laborers who believed that Samuel was attempting to dispose of a human body. So, according to the report, Samuel Haskell hired four day laborers to remove black trash bags from his home. The workers arrived by 3.57 p.m. that same day to do the job. This interaction was actually captured on video. One of the workers said that he was paid $500 to remove three large trash bags. You can see on video as Samuel helps the men load the bags into the truck. You can tell that they are very heavy and it takes several minutes to move all of the bags. After getting the bags into the truck, they drive away. Now, Samuel told the workers that the trash bags were heavy because they were filled with rocks. 
However, when the workers picked up the bags and loaded them into the truck, he could tell that there weren't rocks in there. The bags kind of felt soft and soggy, and it more so felt like meat was inside of those bags. So, with the bags in the truck, they started driving away, but these men got a very uneasy feeling. Something just did not feel right to them. So, about a block away from the house, they stopped the truck and one of the workers peeked inside of the bags. At that point, he saw what he thought looked like a belly button inside. He knew that he was seeing body parts. After seeing that horrific sight, one worker described that he knew he was being tricked. They did not want to be involved in whatever Samuel was trying to involve them with, so by 4.15 p.m. that same day, they turned that truck around, drove back to Samuel and May's home, and left the bags back on the driveway and returned the money. When they did this, Samuel tried telling them that there were just Halloween props in the bags, trying to pass off the body parts as just decorations, but the laborers did not buy it and they did not want to be involved. They returned the bags and left the home, trying to pretty much just wipe their hands of the whole situation. By 4.22 p.m. after the bags were returned, Samuel can be seen leaving the home in his white Tesla. After returning the bags, the men immediately drove to the California Highway Patrol Station to report what they saw, and I guess they were turned away at this point, and they were told to report it to the Los Angeles Police Department. So, they went there, but I guess they also turned them away for whatever reason. They told them to leave, and I guess call 911 from outside. I'm not exactly sure why this happened. If you know more about this process, please let me know in the comments because I found this a little bit bizarre, but that is exactly what these workers did. At that point, the men said that they feared for their life, which is absolutely understandable. They now had knowledge of what was most likely a horrific crime. Some dude was clearly trying to pay them to get rid of a body, and the same man knew that they saw inside the bag and returned the bags because they were so disturbed by it. These laborers were well aware that they were now witnesses to what could have been a violent crime. After making the initial report to 911, police were dispatched to the Haskell home, but they did not find those trash bags. They looked around, but they said they found no evidence of a crime, so they had no reason to look into the home. However, the following morning on Wednesday, November 8th, the same day that this friend felt a little bit uneasy and off-put by Samuel dropping the children off at school, this day there was a homeless person looking through dumpsters about five miles away in an Encino parking lot where he found a garbage bag that was stuffed into a duffel bag that contained a dismembered, headless torso of a female. Again, the garbage bag was found in another duffel bag, and then when they took the garbage bag out, inside of that bag was the headless torso. Of course, this was reported to the police, who arrived shortly after. From Sky Fox, a pop-up tent covers the remains of a woman wrapped in plastic. Detectives say they found only the torso clad in a bra and what was left of her pants after her legs were cut off. I didn't believe it. Irene Melchor works at the cleaners nearby. She arrived not long after police and paramedics around 6.30 in the morning. She overheard a man on a bicycle saying, I found somebody in the trash can, but it, they're not moving. That's all I heard. And then the ambulance guy keeps talking to him, and then he says, what did you see? Well, I kept trying to wake up the body, but it's not moving. At first, Irene thought it might be someone who got drunk and passed out, but then her co-worker saw something straight out of a horror movie, a body without a head or limbs. Pretty scary. When police found the bags with the torso, they immediately made the connection that these bags were the same bags described by the day laborers. So, after finding this body, police looked into the businesses that shared a parking lot where the dumpster with the body was located. And luckily, they were able to find surveillance video from one of the buildings that captured this dumpster pretty perfectly. So, on that footage, we can see a white SUV driving into the parking lot and parking next to the dumpster. We then see a white male getting out of the SUV, opening the trunk, and then lifting a large black garbage bag from the trunk. We can see that the man is struggling from the weight of the heavy bag as he lifts it up and manages to throw it into the dumpster. He then closes his trunk and drives off.
when they found this surveillance footage, they also came across a witness who saw this man and found it suspicious enough that this person actually took a photo of the SUV's license plate. I want to note that the Haskell family is known to have two white SUVs. It was reported that they had a white Volkswagen SUV as well as a white 2014 Nissan Pathfinder. Then, as we know, Samuel also drove a white Tesla, which looks just like the car in that surveillance video. So, I don't know if we know exactly which car it was. I don't know if they even connected the license plate back to Samuel yet. That has not been reported on yet. But either way, using all of this, police were able to obtain a search warrant to search the home in which Samuel and May shared. When executing the warrant, they found that both of the family's white SUVs were missing. Also missing were Samuel's wife, May, as well as her parents, Yang Song and Go Shin. Like I mentioned earlier, friends of May's noticed her absence a few days before that. In addition to that, neighbors said that Yang Song and Go Shin were known to sit in chairs in the front of the house pretty much every day to watch the boys play in the yard. They were also described as warm and outgoing, just like May. So even though they couldn't speak English and weren't able to communicate with the neighbors, they would always wave at the neighbors and would sometimes speak to them using May as an interpreter. However, since November 5th, the neighbors have not seen any sign of any of them. Police were concerned when they weren't at the home because the parents, again, were pretty much always home. Attempts have been made to contact Mei, Yang Song, and Go Shin, but none of them have been able to get a hold of them. It was clear that all three of them are now missing. I do want to note, however, that after finding the torso and realizing that Mei and her parents were missing, their three children were located safely. They were at school at the time that all of this was taking place, and as far as I have seen, they have not been harmed. They are currently in the care of the Department of Children and Families. Then, when police entered the home for the search warrant, they said that immediately they found that there was blood in the home, as well as other items that indicate that a crime was committed within the home. Police have not yet elaborated on what that evidence was because this is still an ongoing investigation. However, the neighbors have told media outlets that more human body parts were found within the home. We also still do not know who the torso belongs to, with police saying that they will have to rely on DNA evidence to formally identify the person. Police did say, though, that they didn't find any more human body parts within the home, Neighbors said that they did, so we don't exactly know which is true. We don't know if police are just trying to keep that information to themselves. We're not exactly sure, so take both of those statements with a grain of salt. Along with that evidence, police also discovered that Samuel had a very strange hobby. He had an unusual obsession with weapons and kept a large collection of weapons within the home. These weapons included a samurai sword as well as a crossbow and some reports say that he also had guns. He was known to do martial arts, having a black belt. But the fact that Samuel had these weapons, it wasn't exactly a secret. Neighbors said that they would only allow their children to play with Samuel and May's children out in the front lawn. Even though these neighbors did have a very close friendship with May, they never allowed them to go in the house because they knew that there were weapons in there and they didn't want to risk the children getting hurt. Witnesses said that Samuel and May's children would even brag to the other neighborhood kids that they had weapons in the house, which to a kid I can see as being very cool. That's probably something that I would have bragged about when I was a kid too, like having swords and crossbows in the house. I'd be like, guys, I have all these cool weapons. How cool am I and how cool is my family? But obviously, as a responsible adult, you should realize that these weapons can be harmful and should be in places where the children cannot reach them. It was also known that May did not like having the weapons in the house and she was also worried about the safety of her young children. In addition to the weapons that he had, investigators found an Instagram account with the username Tragic Streets with a Z. This Instagram account posted many videos and images of people holding swords, swinging around swords, using giant axes, holding machine guns, and things like that. 
things that showed that he had, again, this very deep fascination with weapons and people using these weapons. After making these discoveries and viewing that surveillance footage, police were confident that it was Samuel driving in one of those white SUVs taking that trash bag with the human torso and throwing it into the dumpster. It is thought that the torso belongs to May, while her parents remain missing and have not yet been found, but police do believe that Samuel is responsible for the murder of his wife, May, as well as her parents. Because of this, on November 8th, the same day that the torso was found, Samuel Haskell was charged with three counts of first-degree murder. Tarzana man has been arrested following the discovery of a woman's torso inside a dump dumpster in Encino, and now police say the man's in-laws are missing. Investigators are concerned for their safety. KTLA's Carlos Salcedo joining us live from Tarzana with the very latest developments today. Carlos. Ladies, it's hard to believe that the home behind me here in Tarzana is part of a gruesome crime scene. Three people who lived here, they're still missing, fear dead. Now, the murder suspect, he is under arrest and we're told he's a son of a well-known Hollywood agent. A Tarzana neighborhood rocked by tragedy. Is devastated. Who wouldn't be devastated? The unassuming family home on the 4100 block of Coldstream Terrace, the center of a homicide investigation involving a woman's torso. This is where 37-year-old Mei Haskell lived with her parents, Gao Shan Li and Yang Zhang Wang. All three are missing and presumed dead. Mei's husband, Samuel Haskell, who also lived on the property with the couple's three young sons, was booked on suspicion of murder. Once uh, officers made entry, um, what was discovered was evidence of a crime, including some blood evidence. Forensic detectives scoured through the home Wednesday evening, finding bags of evidence linking the bloody scene to the gruesome remains discovered hours earlier. A homeless man looking for recyclables inside a dumpster in Encino called police after finding a dismembered body. The video was uh, reviewed from that uh, business plaza on Rubio and Ventura, and vehicle information was obtained that led us to this location and once uh, all the pieces were put together it appears that uh, there's definitely a connection with uh, Mr. Haskell. A day earlier police responded to the home after workers reported seeing body parts on the property. When detectives arrived the bags had been removed. And a lovely mom and a hard-working lady and the, loved her parents. Those who knew May and her parents are in disbelief. May had been making plans to meet up with friends and neighbors this week. That woman that's missing, Grandma, I don't know what we're praying for her, to survive, to live, to know what happened. She limped up the street, recovering from a stroke. She was thumbs up, so hopeful. As the search for the three intensifies, detectives are also asking the public's help to find two missing vehicles that could lead them to more clues a white Volkswagen Tijuan, and a white Nissan Pathfinder. And Samuel Haskell was arrested yesterday at the Topanga Mall. He is facing murder charges. His bail set at $2 million. After that, he had his bail hearing where he was granted a bail of $2 million. As of right now, he has not yet posted bail, but I imagine he may be able to soon because of his rich parents, but I can't say for sure. His mother and father have refused to comment on this case, and I also want to note that on the day that Samuel was arrested, his sister Mary had actually shown up to the home. When police saw her, she said that she was actually there to pick up the children, saying that she had no idea that Samuel was arrested and had no idea of any of these allegations surrounding Samuel. So, to me, it doesn't seem like his family knew. I don't think they were in support of any of this. I don't think that they may not even have known that they were having marital issues, who knows, but I don't think they were a part of this and I don't think they even knew that he was going to do this or knew about it after. Obviously, they know now, but before he was arrested, I don't think he mentioned it to anybody. Why would he? Either way, at his hearings, a judge did allow a photographer to be present, but it was actually ruled that media could not release photos of Samuel's face while he was in court 
which was a very unusual ruling given that we already know his name and we know what he looks like from social media. But nevertheless, at his most recent hearing, we don't see his face in the picture, but we can see that he has straggly blonde hair wearing no shirt under his blue suicide vest. So we don't know exactly what's going on with him on the inside, but we know that he probably was not in the best place mentally given that he's wearing a suicide vest and obviously the fact that he just allegedly committed this awful, awful crime. Outside of the courthouse, friends of May's can be seen petitioning, holding up signs that demand justice for May. As of right now, Samuel is in jail, like I said. He faces a max sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. This investigation is still very much an ongoing one. I am sure that there is still so much more to find out here. I feel like we don't even know a fraction of the evidence that they have found so far. To me, I feel like they must have found some very damning bits of evidence to feel comfortable charging Samuel with three counts of murder after only finding one body. And even that, we don't know who the body belongs to yet. Again, I said it is thought that it probably is May, but they will have to do a DNA test to actually confirm who this torso belongs to. In my opinion, I think allegedly he did murder all three individuals, including May and her parents. Allegedly, again, obviously innocent until proven guilty, but I think that there is a good chance that unfortunately they are gone and they will not be coming back. Some friends have speculated that she wanted a divorce, but she was afraid to bring it up for a very long time because she was afraid of how Samuel would react. They think that she probably brought it up again, saying that she was done and that could have been what caused her to have been murdered. That could have been like the trigger for this whole thing. And obviously, if he's going to murder May, he can't have her parents finding out, so he had to murder them too. That is what I think happened Again, this is all alleged and only my opinion, but again, I am really looking forward to finding out what new evidence comes with all of this. So, that is all of the information that we know in this case as of right now. Obviously, this is a very disturbing case and I think it's clear what is going on here. If Samuel truly is responsible for the murder of his wife, I feel so heartbroken for those children. I'm getting so tired of these husbands thinking that they can just get away with murder, thinking that the best way to solve their relationship falling apart is to tear apart their entire family and take a life. And in this case, taking three lives, allegedly. It's truly devastating, and I'm really looking forward to hearing how this case progresses. But that is all I have for today's video, and now I want to know what you all think. Do you think that Mei, Yang Song, and Go Shin have all been murdered? Do you think that Samuel is responsible? If so, why do you think he did this? Do you think the torso they found belongs to Mei? If so, where do you think Yang Song and Go Shin are? Do you think they could have been the body parts that they found within the home? What do you think of this case overall? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All are going to be linked down below. If you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.